Welcome to the second in this series of Arizona Glass Classes sand carving familiarization videos. In this video, we will identify the equipment and supplies required to get started sand carving and optional equipment you may want to have. You will need an enclosure of some type to contain the abrasives used in sand carving for financial and safety reasons. You will want to be able to reclaim and reuse the abrasives and lessen the chances of breathing the dust created which can cause silicosis. Silicosis is a deadly disease and protections to eliminate its contraction should be taken seriously. Lesser expensive siphon fed sandblasting cabinets can be modified to work with a pressure pot for sand carving. They are available in both bench top and floor models. Cabinets are available that are designed specifically to work with pressure pots for sand carving. Some even have integrated pressure pots and dust collectors built into the cabinet. For large items and commercial applications, a walk-in sandblasting booth may be in order. If you plan on using a booth, be sure to include a separate clean air supply for forced air ventilation mask and a full body suit for protection from the abrasive. For on-site blasting, temporary enclosures can be constructed from PVC pipe and plastic sheeting if desired. Air compressors come in all sizes, shapes, and outputs. Tankless diaphragm compressors and pancake tank diaphragm compressors will work for high-speed hand engravers and small pencil blasters, but that's about all. Typical small home garage use compressors are marginal and can be used for small sand carving work, but you will quickly outgrow them. Larger vertical or horizontal tank compressors will meet your requirements well. Remember, it's not the size of the tank that counts, it's the volume of air that the compressor itself can output. The tank only stores a given volume of air in reserve. At some point, the tank is going to be drained enough to trigger the compressor to start up. And if the compressor itself cannot keep up with the airflow requirements of your sandblasting nozzle and pressure pot settings, you will have to stop periodically to let the compressor catch up. You can never have too much air, but running out of air is aggravating, distracting, and the fact that the compressor runs continuously causes the air to draw more moisture, resulting in moisture problems and clogs at the pressure pot and nozzle. The forums at Arizona Glass Classes website has reference charts to help you determine how many cubic feet per minute you will require to carve at a specific air pressure and nozzle size. This will help determine your compressor specifications, not the size of the storage tank. You will need an air regulator to regulate the pressure of the air from the compressor tank to the pressure pot. Compressed air contains moisture. Your system should include a water separator to remove that water. There are several different types. It is preferable to choose one that has a clear bowl so that you can see when it needs emptying. It should also be easy to drain and positioned where you can easily catch the water. You will want a flexible rubber pneumatic hose to connect from the air compressor to the pressure pot. Be sure not to use a hose that has previously been used in a shop environment as most mechanic shops with air tools have automatic oilers in line to automatically lubricate the tools. The residual oil in the line can cause just as much if not more problems as water condensate in the line. A pressure pot holds the abrasive and mixes the abrasive under pressure with the compressed air in the line going to the nozzle. Sand carving with a pressure pot is much more efficient than using a siphon blaster. You can get better results faster with less air pressure and volume expended. Pressure pots come in a range of sizes. This is a complete pressure blaster with a foot pedal control valve, a small pressure pot, and a regulator. Designed originally for dental work, these work well for small items, single stage etching, and half tones. Nozzle sizes are 16th of an inch and smaller. Regular pressure pots range from smaller 40 pound simple design units to 90 pound and larger units incorporating dead man valves at the nozzle or foot pedal valves to control the abrasive and airflow. Notice the last two pots displayed have a dished or concave top with the opening of the pot at the bottom of the dish. 
This style of pot is much easier to fill than the previously displayed red pot, which requires a funnel. You will require some type of control over your air and media flow. The simplest control is a ball shutoff valve that can be mounted anywhere in the airline. This is kind of clumsy due to the fact you'll have to take at least one hand from the nozzle and your object being blasted to open or close the valve. A dead man valve is a common valve used with many sandblasting setups and squeezing the lever on the side of the valve opens and closes the valve, controlling the air and media flow. A simple pinch valve mounted on a flexible plastic hose connected to the nozzle will pinch the air and media closed when activated. The PAB gun is a trigger activated gun shaped assembly specifically designed for sand carving, which is popular with a number of sand carvers. A foot pedal valve allows you to control your air and media flow at the nozzle by the touch of your foot on a pedal. They are very easy to use and the only thing left on the end of the air and media hose is the nozzle, which gives you good control over the direction of your flow and does not deflect the flow when opening or closing by squeezing valves with your hand. You will want a dust collector to remove the dust created in the cabinet as you sand carve, sucking it out of the cabinet so you can still see your work. Many dust collectors are repurposed from woodworking applications. Make sure your filter on your dust collector is fine enough to trap the dust created by sand carving, as it is fine and will pass through many standard shop vac filters. You may also want a respirator mask to help keep the air you're breathing clean if you have any question about the efficiency of your dust collecting system. Now that we've identified the equipment required for the shop, we can discuss what equipment and supplies are required for the office side of the process. Although masks can be made by hand, you'll quickly tire of that and you'll want to create cut stencils or photo mask stencils. Cut stencils will work well for large items, items with less detail, and items that need to be sand carved deeply. Photo resist stencils work well for smaller items and items with fine detail or small text. The coarse abrasive required to carve hard items such as granite and the length of time required to deep carve items will blow through photo resists and thicker cut stencils must be used in those situations. There is a subset of equipment that can be used for both processes. These include a personal computer with graphics or illustration software such as Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, Canvas, or Inkscape. Cut stencils are stencils made of a material that is resistant to the sand carving process, with holes or open areas cut where the item is to be sand carved. The material has an adhesive backing and is applied to the item to be sand carved after the pattern or image is cut. To create cut stencils, you will want a vinyl cutter. These are available in either desktop or floor size units. The larger floor size units can also handle and cut 8 or 12 inch wide rolls if desired, but you can't put a 24 inch roll in a desktop cutter. Consider your long term needs and don't buy too small initially. Vinyl cutters are controlled by cutting software on your computer. Most vinyl cutters come with a cutting software package. You will need rolls of resist to cut. Depending upon what you are sand carving and how deep you intend on carving, you can use signed vinyl, vinyl paint mask, or thicker rubber masking like Hartco, Anchor, or Buttercut. You will need transfer tape to assist in transferring the cut stencil to the object being sand carved. You will want a vinyl applicator squeegee to assist in applying the transfer tape to the stencil and applying the stencil to the object being sand carved. Additional helpful items are an X-Acto knife, a pair of fine tweezers, and a dental pick for weeding or picking out the cut portions of the stencil before blasting. Photoresist stencils are stencils made of an ultraviolet light sensitive material that is resistant to the sand carving process. The material is exposed to a UV light source with a film positive image between the light source and the film. Depending upon the type of film, after exposure it may require a simple washout process. Then the material is applied to the item to be sand carved. To create photo resist stencils, you'll need either an inkjet or a laser jet printer and either vellum or transparency sheets to print the film original used to expose the mask. 
You will need an ultraviolet exposure unit to expose the mask material with. They range from the small one bulb electrolyte exposure units to large new arc halide floor units. You can also make an exposure unit yourself and Arizona Glass Classes Forum has a set of plans on their forums just for that. You will need photoresist stencil material. This comes in a wide variety of thicknesses from 2 mil to 10 mil and is available in sheet or roll stock. If you're using normal photoresist, you will need a washout station to develop the exposed stencil with a high pressure warm water. A washout station does not have to be anything more elaborate than a high pressure trigger spray nozzle connected to the aerator threads of your kitchen sink to control the temperature of the water. You will want a squeegee to apply the completed photoresist to the object being sand carved. Additional miscellaneous tools which are helpful would be an X-Acto knife and a pair of scissors. Masking tape and duct tape are helpful to mask off areas around the mask or stencil. This helps protect the areas of the object not intended to be blasted from being frosted by rebounding abrasive in the cabinet. I hope this short video has given you a better idea of the equipment required to sand carve. Lost? Need more directions? Check out our companion videos, Sand Carving 101, an introduction, and Sand Carving 103, the process of sand carving, for information on how to put it all together and create your first sand carved item.